today it's like you. It's the day that your life has been turned upside down. You know, and I got up this morning and I was thinking about what happened that morning. I said to him, don't go anywhere. Come straight home. Your mother is coming back later on. That's the last thing I said to him. I never knew when I had my first child with Stephen that I would see the name of my son being called all over the world. Well, today's verdicts are the most significant steps so far in the long road to justice for Stephen Lawrence's family. Since April 1993, when his son was murdered, Stephen's father, Neville, has been relentless. I started going to school 1993, just after Stephen's murder, to make some kind of change. It would be the best place to go to the schools and, and talk to the younger generation about some of the things that happened to us. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while, you know, visiting schools and talk to the younger people which you are, tell you a little bit about Stephen Lawrence. Stephen Lawrence was my first child. And he did something that made me very, very happy. When it was time for him to go to university, he said he wanted to be an architect, something that I wanted to be when I was a child and didn't managed to do it. Unfortunately, one night coming from his uncle's house in Eltham, he was set upon by five or six boys and they took his life. Today is a special day all over the world now. Everywhere you can look for news to do with racism, which I'm so pleased to see is not a, a thing of the past, but it's a lot better than it used to be. In the early days, people did lots of things that was very disgusting and cruel to each other called people names, and made life miserable for others. When I, when I came to this country in 1960, and I thought in the early days we were saying this was the mother country, and some of the things I learned when I came here, I was so surprised that I had to learn these things, and had to changed the way I lived in Jamaica because we in Jamaica are a country of different people from all over the world and we live together. We, we have problems but some of the problems that I saw here we never had them so I had to get used to it. If I was in Jamaica, Stephen is buried in Jamaica because we decided vandalism was going to be something that would happen if Stephen was buried here. So we decided to take Stephen to Jamaica. And when I'm in Jamaica, which I'm mostly, if I feel like going and see him, I jump in my car and I drive and I go and speak to him, talk to him as if he's alive. Well, that's some of the things that we do as our nation thinks of death in a different way from some people think of it. Although the person is, is gone, we still think we can talk to them. And um, I'm here until June, and I normally leave this country just before it gets really, really cold. Because in Jamaica, there's no winter. 
And that's one of the things I don't like of this place with the putting on eaters and all that kind of stuff. I can go out to the seaside, to the beaches, any time of the year. I don't have to switch on my eater. The eater is the sun. I don't know any of, if any, so any of you have there and been to the West Indies and see the nice warm sea, the beautiful oceans, the trees, the birds, the summer plants that you don't even know, but you eat the fruits here, like the coffee trees, the banana trees, the orange trees, the coconut water trees. The first thing I think of when I hear the pilot say we are about to land is to get some coconut water. And that's one of my favorite. So if there's any questions that you would like to ask me, free, free, I'm here. Goals motivate us to achieve our aspirations. Sometimes we are inspired by certain people and we aspire to be like them as we grow up. On your whiteboards, I want you to write down as many strengths that you believe you have for one minute. So how many strengths do you believe you have? It's so important for them to know the history of this area, not just to know what it is like in the present, but actually know how we got to where we are here. I came to this primary school myself um, as a child and it was a very different uh, population or demographic at the time. Um, it was predominantly white. I, there was only three other black children in my year group. Now it's 90% black children. Um, and you can see the change in the diversity. For them it's a completely different experience, the experience that I had when I was a child here. I think it was Black History Month and in school we were learning about um, we were learning about famous people in history like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X and Stephen Lawrence was mentioned and when I heard it was close by I was like wow that's very not very recent but this it was a little while ago but it was very close to where I lived so I was quite shocked that it would happen around my area because I had never heard of racism and how people were treated so that's when I first heard of Stephen Lawrence. Um, I learned about the story of Stephen Lawrence and what I want to and how aspirations can help you when you grow up. So I've done my own research about, you know, black people and how they are treated. Um, I did um, my research online and then Stephen Lawrence showed up. The reason why I feel safe in my school and community is because, like, because most people are friends with each other and when you're friends with each other, you feel safe all the time. Around my community, it's very comfortable place because we have different areas where maybe some places are majority white, but even if you go there, a different race, a different skin, they won't treat you any differently. They won't look at you in a weird way. And I think that should be happening everywhere, not just in a specific community. And I think that everybody should be treated equally. Um, I want to say God bless you and well done because it's not an easy thing to forgive somebody who took your son for no absolute reason. So I want to say well done. Thank you. I'm very sorry for your loss and I hope that you will have uh, and I hope that you will be able to carry on with your life even without Stephen Lawrence. I would like to say, uh, have a great life and don't forget about Stephen. I just want to say thank you to Neville. Thank no, you for coming no, into school. No, 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 no. One thing I still talk about now is, I was in an office in a place called Kingston, the other side of this, and a woman came into the office and saw me sitting down. And I was really feeling down. And she said to me, um, are you Mr. Lawrence? And I said, yes. And she said, no, you're not Mr. Lawrence. And she went and asked the guy who runs the, the, the center. 
And, she, and he said to her, yes, this is Lawrence. And she came back and she said to me, Stephen was sent for a certain reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I can tell you from that woman said that to me, I felt a bit better. He has set a legacy. His yeah. name will be spoken for many years to come. Yeah. On many books, he's on the front cover. He's across the internet. He's everywhere you find, and locally, he will never, ever be forgotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stephen has touched a lot of lives and made it better. My loss, but he's served, he's done what he was sent here for, to achieve what his, his life was for. Stephen's legacy is the fact that people and look at each other and say, well, I'll never do that to somebody's family again. I'll never do that to let another family suffer the way we've suffered over the years.